Steve Bowers welcoming you to Dialogue at E Plus TV 6 in a conversation with Russell Morrow, who for the last couple of years as we do this program has been the pastor at the Forest Heights United Methodist Church, making a change in his life as we, we do this. You're about to begin a new work in Memphis. So what are you going to be doing? We're going to Memphis to uh, do a church plant. Okay. In southwest Memphis. Okay. Yeah. What is the church situation there? Is, is it going to be a Methodist church plant? Is that yes, this is sponsored by the uh, Memphis Annual Conference okay. of the United Methodist Church. All right, church. so when they looked at Memphis, then how did they decide to, to, to do this? For what reason? My understanding is that they've been working on a strategic plan for a while now to, uh, to establish some churches in different areas of Memphis um, where uh, I guess there's growth or, or lack of growth and they want to make a strong presence uh, and be relative to uh, those communities. Okay. Southwest Memphis is what then? What are we talking about? I think it's area code 38109, All pretty right. much uh, southwest of uh, 240, down okay. between 61 and 51 towards uh, South Haven. Okay. Right. So it's, it's, <coughs> it's, not, it's not urban, not inner city, then it's, it's further further out then or further down? Further yeah. south than... Um, than 240, okay. Yeah. Okay. Have you been to the area? Have you looked at it? Well, through the years, I've been through the area okay. for the last, for the last uh, almost 30 years okay. in and out of that area. Okay. So what's, what is it like? What is Because Memphis, is, I mean, there are areas in Memphis that have changed significantly over the last few decades down there. So what is it like? Racial composition, income? Well, this particular area, I believe, is going to be, the demographic is uh, largely largely African-American. Okay. Newer area, older area? Older. Older area. Yeah, it's okay. been there a while. Okay. Ha yeah. Has the African-American community been there for a long time, or is it uh, an area that where the African-American community has moved into over the last? I'm not totally sure, okay. but again, as I travel back and forth through that area uh, through the years, I, I believe it's been okay. uh, mostly African-American. African-American, okay. So what do you do then? What will you be doing? How do you do this when you, you go into a new area? Well, we'll go into the area and uh, we'll be working with um, Meth Methodist Hospital. Okay. And they have a program called Navigators where they have persons come out into the various communities uh, across uh, uh, South Memphis, um, northern, well, southern, southern Memphis area. Okay. Uh, northern Mississippi and Arkansas. And they develop relationships in the community, uh, helping the community know the resources that are available to them from um, uh, Methodist hospital. hospitals. Okay. And so I probably will partner with one of the navigators and get to know people in the community and organizations and okay. churches and um, and just begin to build relationships. Okay. Has there been a United Methodist presence in that area before, or is this new? I'm sure that there has been. Um, I'm still learning the details. Okay. Uh, but you know, as 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 seasons change in communities and demographics change uh, over the decades, you know, yeah. you you need new uh, right. new new churches plant new seeds. Did you ask for this or did the bishop ask you? We've had a long conversation with my uh, district superintendent, uh, Richard Clark, and, uh, and our bishop, okay. Bill McAlilly, and um, they were trying to find the best place to put me okay. to use my gifts and graces. Okay. And that's what yeah. we uh, All right. came well, up let's with. Go, that's going to be an interesting transition. Have you done new church building? Prior. I haven't done any new church building, but I've always been able to work in the community and okay. build relationships with people. What comes first then? You know, uh, we talk about the church is not a building, it's the people, but it's people and then building, or you start find, trying to find a location and then draw people to that? I mean, sometimes people set up storefront churches with just them, you know, and then go from there, you know. Well, I'm still new to this particular, okay. Interesting stuff. This, this particular aspect of ministry. I, but I like the idea of being able to work through the hospitals, which gives you right. a base of contact with people. Right. So, yeah, it, it's, I, I believe it's more about building relationships. Okay. Um, we've been able to go into various communities and build relationships with people, and, um, and it, I, it'll be the same. Okay. We'll, I know there are about to be churches in that area already. Yeah, okay. definitely. So then when you... 
when you come in as a foreign entity, so to speak, here, then, then you know, uh, because not that churches are turf protective, but mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's like, you know, Russell, it's nice to see you, and the last thing we need is another church here. Right. right okay. Right. So, so you know, what, what becomes in your message or point of contact or why you're there? Well, one, I have a passion for young people. And uh, my wife and I, we have a ministry called New Generation Ministries. And for um, 30 years, we've been working with young people, building relationships, encouraging them. And um, we, we try not to be a threat to anybody. Okay. Because if there's a, a, a small church in a rural community and they don't have a lot of resources okay. and they have youth, you know, what we've tried to do was to partner with them and other churches and bring all the youth together okay. for the purpose. Uh, like when we first came here, we had um, youth conferences for, for youth in the community. And um, we just opened it up and shared with everybody, and then hopefully they'll take what um, they learned from us back to their communities. Okay, all right. Will that be a part of what you do, try to do here, is it, it, to work, to key in on young people? Yeah, yeah, okay. we would try to do that. Okay, and then, and then see where, where it goes from there. Because like I said, you know, I'm sure as far as the structure of the Methodist Church, there's, there's some self-preservation or expansion or whatever that they're right. looking at. Right, you know, right. Your work is on the ground, to reach people, right, right, and if they become Methodists, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine too, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Not that the bishop is watching, this. <laughs> but but I mean, because that does become a dual right. situation. I'm, I'm, right. I'm here, and if you can take something back, right. if I can enhance your life with the with the presence of Christ, or whatever, then right, you take. You know, it back. we we want to build a, a community of faith that is Methodist, mm -hmm. and um, but you know, there are so many people in our communities around the country that are not affiliated with any church. Mm -hmm. uh, you'd be surprised to know that, you know, we grew up in the church and we've mm -hmm. been a church been a part of our life, but it's uh, sometimes it's hard to understand that there are kids in our communities and in our families that don't even know the story of David and Goliath. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they need, they need to hear that, and mm -hmm. it's how you present it, yeah. you know, and you give them a fresh word. Um, we've been working on a, a curriculum uh, developing through the years, and it keeps evolving, the curriculum, how to reach and speak to young people about biblical principles without even having to mention the name Amen. of a church, okay. because what you really want them to do yeah. is understand the wisdom yeah. and the teaching of the word. You know, years ago, when I was much, much younger, Art Link letters, kids say the darndest thing. That's right. So many of his questions were Bible questions, you know, right. or stories. And I thought, well, today it would be very difficult. You couldn't do that kind of show today. I mean, because it was just assumed if I said something about the flood that everybody would know Noah or like right. Goliath and David, everybody would know about right. the stones. And now I think that, yes, to change fabric. Right, right. You know, they, don't, they don't know. And, yeah. and, and if you're a good storyteller, you could present those okay. stories in a way that's okay. compelling okay. to them and, and speak okay. right in their language and right where they are and their experience, and, uh, and they'll listen. Because one of the things I discovered, if you could tell a story and speak to two uh, young people and young adults and just be genuine, they will listen. They will listen. They will listen. Russell Moore is with us. He has been the uh, pastor at the Forest Heights United Methodist Church here in Jackson. He's about to start a new church work in the city of Memphis. When we come back, he's a minister in the, not CME Church, AME Church. He's a minister in the United Methodist Church. How did that happen, and how has Forest Heights and the experience in Jackson been for him? This is Dialogue at E Plus TV. The mapping system our local 911 services use to locate the site of an emergency requires a high-speed connection. E-Plus Broadband's network speed and local service with unparalleled response times helps organizations like this to perform at their best, especially when every second counts. This is why Internet services for 911 dispatchers are delivered by Jackson Energy Authority. To connect your organization, call 422-7500 today. In 1986, my life changed forever when I struck three buried high-voltage cables while working on an excavation site. 30,000 volts of electricity blew through my body. I'm lucky to be alive and able to walk again. Today, 
Accidents like mine can be avoided with a simple call to 811 in order to have your dig site marked. Always call 811 before digging and be a hero. Respect the flags. Brought to you by Tennessee 811. Welcome back to Dialogue at E Plus TV 6 and a conversation with Russell Morrow, who for two years has been the pastor at the Forest Heights United Methodist Church. He's starting a new church work in Memphis. If you're just joining us, hope you can pick this up on replay because we've been talking about that new church planning and, and role. If people meet you and they say you're a Methodist minister, it might be a safe assumption you're an AME minister or a CME minister, and you're not. Uh, and, 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 so, and, and so I wanted to pursue that. How, how did you wind up being affiliated with the, uh, with the United Methodist Church? Well, I was educated and trained in the African Methodist Episcopal okay. Church. So AME, okay. And uh, my heart, that is my heart. But years ago, I, I realized that um, the body of Christ is not limited to any particular uh, race, creed, color, anything like that, and that it's a mosaic. And I wanted to expand my ministry, and uh, I felt strongly that that's what God had placed in my heart. So um, some friends suggested that I look at the United Methodist Church. Okay. Now, all through my pastoral career, I've been associated with the United Methodist Church one way or another okay. uh, in terms of the communities where we pastored as an AME pastor, um, building friendships and relationships with other communities of faith. Okay. I always ended up preaching in many of the uh, United Methodist, Methodist churches, churches okay. anyway. Okay. And um, so we pursued that opportunity back in 1997 to come into the United Methodist Church. Okay. And How many assignments have you had then in, in, with the United Methodist Church since 97? Well, it's interesting when... Um, because there are <coughs> predominantly African-American congregations within United Methodist right. Church. Right? There are. And we have some here in, in, in Jackson. You know, right. Forest Heights obviously was not. But then, so right. did you get assigned to African churches or...? Well, when we, when we came in, we, we left Coldwater, Mississippi in the AME Church. Okay. And I had been working in Memphis with uh, Dr. Well, Reverend Colenzo Hubbard of the Episcopal Church, and he okay. had an outstanding youth program in Claiborne Homes. Okay. So, you know, I got my immersion experience in Memphis there. When I came over to United Methodist Church, they sent me to to uh, African American Two Point Charge in Dyersburg. Okay. And we stayed there uh, seven years, and okay. then. We went to, um, they sent us to Martin in Weekly County. Okay. And we stayed in that area, and we passed it over a nine-year period, several okay. churches, and then they sent us to Jackson. Okay. So actually, we're going full circle. Circle, circle, and headed into Memphis. Or when you were assigned to Forest Heights, uh, which is an established congregation here, it's predominantly Caucasian, right. right? And so, what was that like? Well, it was, uh, when they called me, and asked me to, to, to come the, okay. when the uh, district superintendent. It was pretty exciting because he had a clear-cut plan of action okay. for Forest Heights. And, um, and, and I felt like we could participate. What was that handle. plan then, or what did he see, or why did he want you to be the, the pastor of this church? Because the community around Forest Heights has changed Changing. over okay. since, okay. you know, it was established okay. in uh, 1953. So they saw it perhaps becoming a multicultural church then. Right. That was, I believe that was their hope. That okay. was our discussion. And okay. then the congregation um, uh, was aging, okay. and there was not a lot of uh, young people. Okay. And so we sat down and, and talked So about what's that experience been like then? At Forest, Forest Heights, Heights yeah. it's... I can honestly say that this has been one of the best experiences as a pastor okay. in all of the churches. Even though, uh, as with all pastoring, there's always struggle. There's always going to be struggle. But the people at Forest Heights um, are very accepting of of my family and I, okay. and have worked very closely with me on um, the initiatives. Okay. 
What have you worked to do there then? Because if, if you're looking at a congregation that is aging, then you want, you obviously have to have new people if, if the right. congregation is going to survive. If there's going to be work in the neighborhood, and not all do. I mean, our downtown churches draw from all over the city. It's right. not that people live downtown, they go to First Methodist downtown or it's St. Luke's or whatever. It's right. drawn from all over the city. Um, but it, it, so churches can survive without, without being geographically based. But if you're going to try to work in a, in a community, what has right. that been like for Forest Hunt? Well, I think it was overwhelming. Okay. You know, uh, my, my philosophy for, for working at Forest Heights was pretty much twofold. To nurture, maintain, and love what I call the legacy congregation, okay. those that had been there all along. And then to plant seeds, uh, new seeds, to, in the community, through uh, programs and outreach from the church, and draw on people who would come in and help us okay. do uh, projects that we want to reach out in the community with. Okay. So we developed uh, a relationship with uh, Keep My Hood Good okay. and with RAP, uh, with the uh, mayor's um, uh, commi committee on uh, against domestic violence. And we worked hard with that. And then we just work with different churches and, and persons in the community. And so people would come in and in the church and we would do things together. And um, we were able to uh, 